It's your body, your baby, your birth at the end of the day. She believes she could, so she did. Mm -hmm. Every couple that I meet, especially the women, just say they want to feel in control. Mm -hmm. Seeing is believing, right? Yes. Yeah. If you've been here for a while, you will know that we've mentioned our hypnobirth teacher a lot. This is Sophie. Um, Sophie's a, um, a family friend. We've known Sophie quite a long time. And we've done hypnobirthing with her in 2021. Yes. Hello, Sophie. Come quickly, hasn't it? Yes. So yes. pleased to see you back with bump number two. So quickly. <laughs> yeah. yes. First of all, Sophie, to let the guys know a bit more about you. Yeah. Um, how long have you been teaching for and what made you get into to hypnobirthing? So when I got pregnant with Dougie, hypnobirthing wasn't really a thing. You just did your standard antenatal education that was free with the NHS and you kind of learned all about the drugs and the intervention, all the things that could go wrong. Mm. I did actually read a book, I think, on positive birth, and I think I listened to a CD. That's how long ago it was. It was a CD. Wow. <laughs> what's, what's that? Exactly. <laughs> exactly. And it was scratched. It was quite annoying. Um, so, yeah, so I did prepare in some way, but looking back in hindsight, I was very ill-prepared and uneducated, and I didn't have any skill set. So... I had a fairly negative birth experience with my son, my first baby. I felt very disempowered. I didn't feel like I had any autonomy over the birth. I didn't make good birth choices. My partner was ill-equipped as well. Mm. Um, so when we got pregnant with our second child, it was around that era where positive birth was really, we were really making a shift towards it and the hip birthing was coming about. Um, so I found a course and early on in pregnancy and I really focused hard on it. I practiced every day and I could feel that fear going and starting oh, to feel good. more positive. And then I went overdue again. I refused induction. I had continuous daily monitoring and I laboured at home the entire time. And then I had Mabel in the pool, drug free, with a smile on my face. You've seen her birth. Yeah. Thousands of people have seen her <laughs> birth. Um, and from that moment, I felt it was my duty to share positive birth with other women and couples and tell them that it is very, very possible and happening every day all around the world. But in our culture and our society, we're conditioned to believe that it's not and that birth yeah. is always negative. It's always traumatic. And it's my job and your job and every woman's job that's had a good experience to share that positivity, right? Yeah. Yeah. How, how long ago was that now? So Mabel's... that was, so I try, I've been teaching just over a decade. Yeah. So Mabel's 14. I trained a little bit later after her birth. Yeah. So I've been teaching over 10 years, taught thousands of couples. I then went on to do my doula training. So I've actually been supporting at births as well, wow. which has done amazing things for my teaching. It's really enriched my teaching because every birth is like a crash course in midwifery, right? Yeah, yeah. You learn so much because every birth is so different. So, um, yeah, and then I went on to do other training, my pregnancy yoga training, my rebozo training. Um, and, yeah, so my, my program is rich. It's different. It's a fresh approach to birth. And so varied as well. You've yeah. Got lots of different angles and different yeah. well, experiences. Look, I really believe that birth isn't... Quite often we only see birth as a physical event and it's not just, yes, it's a massive physical experience, but it is emotional, it is mental, it is spiritual, if you like. It's so many different things that it calls upon in that moment and parenting and beyond, you know, all aspects of it challenge us, don't they? Yeah. So what is hypnobirthing? Can you give us an overview? I can. I actually hate the word hypnobirthing because I feel like it conjures up images of hippies and jostics and it yeah. gets misinterpreted especially by grandparents and, and generations that come before us but for me hypnobirthing is just going back to basics it's going back to the understanding and the learning and the retraining in us all that birth wasn't meant to be a medicalized event be a big flaw in humanity if it was wouldn't it we wouldn't have evolved no. yeah and it's about stepping into that power again, about understanding that we're perfectly formed to give birth, to grow a baby, but also to give birth to a baby. It's a rewiring of that, that condition, that social conditioning that we've had for generations now that birth is awful, traumatic, you're gonna need an epidural, you're gonna need pain relief. Yeah. It's rewiring that neural pathway to understand that birth is a normal and natural event, yeah. which it is, which we're designed to do. It's a skill set. It's a skill set of breathing techniques, visualizations, active birth. 
it's an education for me, especially in my courses, about understanding the physiology of birth and the stages of labour and birth. Because when we understand what we're feeling in our body and what's actually going on, everything makes sense and clicks. That sensation mm. I'm feeling is actually the uterine fibres pulling up and staying snug to baby and massaging baby down. That's what we're kind of experiencing. When women start to understand what they're feeling, they start to build confidence in their bodies yeah. and birth itself. I'll be honest, I, when we said we were going to do hypnobirth, and I agree with what you're saying with the terminology, I was a bit thought, oh, mm. this is mm. going to be very hippie. And yeah. after I left, I said to you, I was embarrassed about how little I yeah. knew about so many people the, say that. the female anatomy and how it works yeah. and the, the turning of the babies that come through the pelvis and the wine mm. and the actual, mm. that's what really interested me with it was the, the science behind it. Yeah, you took yeah. the words out of my mouth. There is a science, obviously the science, the physiology, the process of birth, but also the science behind these um, techniques of hypnobirthing because we are... We know how fear affects labour. We know it changes our brain, chem um, our hormones and our chemistry. Yeah. And we know that that will then influence labour progress and, and how we experience pain. And there's also the science there to support that we are able to rewire our neural pathways. We yeah. have neuroplasticity in our brains. So we're able to change the way we think and our beliefs. I mean, I remember when I met you, Lizzie, and you had, you know, you were diagnosed with tocophobia. Yeah. And what an amazing journey you went on. And, and you did that. You yeah. did that by choice. You did it. Well, I would say <laughs> you did it. We'll argue that. Yeah. I would say your commitment and your desire for change yeah. and your commitment to practice and the techniques is what changed it. I, I gave you an insight, but you changed it. Yeah. In your experience, you've obviously been doing this a long time, what's the most common issue that families come to you with that you, you sort of have to work to get them through? Yeah, it's a good question. I would say most couples come to me with the same, um, from the same position that they want to feel an element of control. Mm -hmm. Every couple that I meet, especially the women, just say they want to feel in control. Yeah. And that's really easy for me to explain because I can't say if you do X, Y is going to happen in birth because birth is unknown and births change and women deviate their birth preferences sometimes. Mm -hmm. But I can tell you with absolute confidence that emotional control will go with you no matter what turn your birth takes. Mm. So if you have to go to theatre for some reason, these skills are transferable there. They're transferable postnatally as well. Um, so they're a transferable skill for life, if you like. Yeah. But most people say they want to feel in control. Occasionally, I'll have second time mums that have come who didn't have a positive birth experience. They didn't prepare properly or whatever happened, happened. And they have something to put to bed. So for those yeah. women, it can be even more challenging. And I was that person. So I sit in a very good position to understand that, that you have to understand that was one journey. We need to close the tab on it and put it to bed. And we need to appreciate that we're approaching it in a new way with a new skill set, new techniques. Yeah. Um, and I would say for every woman that kind of says, you know, I always people hear clients say to me, oh, but my friend did hit the birth and she said it was rubbish. What I'd like to say is you have no understanding of their preparation. You don't know exactly the scenario, the situation, um, the medical situation. The teacher. The teacher, yeah. the commitment. Did they practice? The commitment yeah. by the couple themselves. But also I think it's important to remember that that woman that has had the bad experience will dismiss any evidence that suggests it could have been a different way because fundamentally she feels disempowered from her birth. Yeah. So I would say try not to, going off on a tangent a bit, but it's important to say try not to engage in negative hypnosis because as well as positive hypnosis and, and all this training that we're doing, there's always that opportunity to be lost in the moment of someone's terrible birth story and you might think, oh, I'm not taking it in, but you are. Yeah. Yeah. Your conscious part of your brain is sidetracked and the subconscious is open to this suggestion from that person that birth is awful. So we do need to be very mindful of every conversation we have, everything we watch, everything we read, everything is kind of training our brain. Yeah, and I'm not surprised that you had the fear you did because like you said, we're conditioned from such a young age to be told that this is a horrendous sort of experience. It's going to be horrible. It's going to be life threatening. When... That's how you see it on the telly, isn't it? Well, yeah, it's laying and... on the back, screaming, yeah. in pain, blood, 
100 people in the room, bright lights in the woman's eyes. So I'm not like, surprised, that's yeah. how Labour yeah. is viewed on the TV. And I think for me, I mean, when I don't have my teaching hat on, I do actually try not to talk overly positively about my experience or my clients' experiences because I, I think for a lot of people, it's just a step too far. They cannot even con yeah. get the concept that birth could be any other way than their own experience. Yeah. And they either think you're mental or you're lying. <laughs> I felt it, I felt it because I feel like when I've been in conversations before and there is sort of like a the competition culture where yeah. I've got, they've got to have the worst yeah. because it is traumatic for some people. I get that. So and they want to say, like, I'm a warrior. I yeah. did it, you know? Yeah. And I get that. But, like, for me, I'm on the other end of the spectrum where I'm like, yeah. mine was great. Like, it was, and then people are like, oh. Yeah. What? They don't yeah. sort of want to hear it. It does not the norm. Yeah. And sometimes those yeah. seeds are planted from our own mothers, aren't they? Sometimes yeah. it's an early seed that was planted from them and their experience. Yeah. So, who knows? I mean, we're conditioned a lot in society without realising. Yeah, of course. Every birth is a miracle. Yeah. And, you know, no birth is easy. You know, a cesarean is not easy. It's major Absolutely. surgery. Um, so, but what my big um, standpoint is, I, I don't define positive birth by the story itself, by what happens. Yeah. A positive birth can still be a beautiful C-section. It could be instruments still. It's for me, it's how did that woman feel emotionally afterwards? Did yeah. she feel listened to? Did she feel like she had autonomy? Did she feel like she made good birth choices? Did she feel an element of control? How does she now feel? That what that's what defines a positive birth to me. Okay. Yeah, it's not the story itself, it's how does that woman feel postnatally? Yeah, like that. And you said there's transferable skills. Yeah. And you said you were the hypnobirth therapist for Harry Kane. Yeah. And he, he uses well, some... Kate Kane. Kate she Kane, was, sorry. She was doing the main work. <laughs> so Harry, Harry didn't give birth? No. No. Um, so does that mean I can now play for England? Because I've gone through... Uh, 100%. Okay. Yeah. I can take penalties for England now. Oh, those <laughs> so Sophie, what are the main benefits of hypnobirthing? Oh, they've asked, how long have we got? <laughs> I mean, you're in a great position to say that because you've experienced it and you came from such a fearful state. To such a beautiful story so they're vast and they're different for every woman and um, women but for me um it would mean a reduced likelihood of drugs you know we're going with that outset from the beginning the drugs are always there pain relief is there for every woman but we are going with that outset that we're trying to kind of navigate away from that um so i'd say less use of drugs I would say births, for that reason, tend to be more active and upright. We're more mobile, so generally less interventions. And that brings empowerment to a woman. That brings a positive birth experience when she um, is actively birthing. I think it empowers dads. I think it's a very scary scenario, especially if you're a first-time dad and you haven't understood the stages of labour or you feel like you don't have any skills to help mum when she's in pain. It can be really disempowering and scary for dads. Mm. Would you say, Chris? Yeah, pre-doing pre hypnobirthal with you, I, didn't, I felt like I didn't have much of an idea. It was a daunting task. Yeah, I don't think you realise how important your role was. Yeah. yeah, no, yeah, I thought I'd just... Yeah, it's true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. cut the umbilical cord. Yeah. yeah, I think dads do feel like they are a spare part unless yeah. they mm. really appreciate the valuable role that they have within the environment and helping mum with her techniques, bringing her back to that when she's having yeah. a wobble. Um, and so many different... People always say to me, what do you do when you do learn? I'm like, don't stop. There's so much that we can okay. do mm. to support a mum. Yeah. So for the people watching, if there was five top tips that people could could take away from this video to achieve a positive birth, what would you say they were? I would say, remember that we are, as well as positive hypnosis and all the best will in the world and all that good preparation, we can constantly be bombarded with negative hypnosis. So I'd say be mindful of every conversation you engage in, everything you read and everything you watch, especially on social media, because there's so much anecdotal information it's not evidence-based mm -hmm. and my big thing about birth education is evidence-based research so number two i would say commit 
you know, know your goal and work towards it, just like you've been training for anything else in your life. I know how hard you committed to your yeah. birth last time, and that means daily practice. It yeah. means saying, not saying, oh, I don't have time, I can't find time. We can. Everyone can find 10 minutes. Everyone can stick an audio on when they get into bed and fall asleep, yeah? yeah we can all true. play an, an affirmation when we're cooking dinner. We can all spend 10 minutes while we're cleaning our teeth, visualising something. We can all spend three minutes breathing. Mm. Yeah. Number three, I would say is um, if it's not been in your practice to think positively about your body, now is the time, no better time. Um, where the mind goes, the body will follow. So if you start um, thinking and letting yourself spiral into negative thoughts, I just want you to notice that. Visualize yourself taking the cursor over, closing down the tab on the thought and replacing it with what you want to happen. Um, because where the mind goes, the body follows. Yeah. So number four, I have a lot of clients that come to me and say, my midwife said X or the consultant said this, but my gut's saying no and I don't feel happy about it. I always say to those clients, nothing can be done without consent. Um, I'd rather they made good informed choices and looked at research and then made a decision. Um, but it's your body, your baby, your birth at the end of the day. So the decision has to be the couple's. Yeah. So number five, my match for life is she believes she could, so she did. Love that. I love that. And it's true, you know. Um, yeah. Belief is a big part of this. Yeah. It's really, it's strange because they – have you heard the story about the four-minute mile? No. So in marathon running, no one had run a four-minute mile and they said it was impossible no one could um, until the first person ran a four-minute mile. After that happened – hundreds of people Amazing. then started to run the four minute mile because they knew it could happen and they Possible. believed in it. Yeah, yeah. so they, they, they yeah. started doing it. Seeing's believing, right? Yes. Yeah. Sophie, tell us, where can people find you? Mainly in my kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, you can find me, well, you can work with me from all around the world. Um, my program is now an online and live program. So it's a fusion of live Zoom classes and online recorded content. Um, if you live locally to me near Bishop Stortford, then I also have live classes. I do private one-to-ones. I have live yoga classes. I also have an online yoga program too. Lovely. Perfect. And what are your socials? So my social is the Hip Yoga Therapist. I'm Sophie Sinclair, and that's my website. So sophiesinclair.co.uk. We're going to pop Sophie's socials in the description, in the show notes, uh, links to her website and links to her social media channels as well. <laughs> if you found value in today's video, please consider pressing that like button and giving us a subscribe. We release pregnancy and parenting videos every week. Thanks for watching. Cheers Thanks. for watching. Bye.